Tell me what you eat, and I will tell you what you are, said Jean Antoine Réat Savarin, the famous French gastronome. Tell me your relation to pain, and I'll tell you who you are, said Ernst Junger. This review is all about dealing with, exploring, and in some cases, inviting certain types of pain. So, to check something out to heal the pain, I would like to point out this video I made on the music of Arvo Part and Tabula Rasa, which you can check out on Patreon if you support the show for a dollar or more. Beautiful music. Beautiful music. I described it as the single strongest argument for believing in a benevolent god. Yeah, no, for real. It's easy. You can set a monthly cap so you don't go over your budget. And if you send me a one-time donation of $50, I'll give you every single vlog that I've made so far, plus all of the ones that I produced in 2017. I put one out every week and they range from all different sorts of subjects, from you know film to music to art to life, etc. all kinds of stuff. This is my first video on a musician or a composer, and it's some of the most profound stuff I've ever heard in my life. And I think you will agree, so check it out. Much more to come. Thanks to all of those who have supported it already. All right, on to the review. Ernst Jünger is a notorious, notorious German writer who lived to be 102, smoking, still, and uh, not looking a day over 70. He was still giving interviews at that age, and I'm linking to this really brilliant one, which is definitely worth your time. Uh, kind of just a comprehensive overview of who he was, where he was, what he did, his relationship with the Nazis, with World War I, which he fought in, and uh, it's an incredible documentary. I highly recommend it. And I don't think, I, I believe it's, uh, uh, he didn't actually know that these guys were going to interview him when he was meeting with them, so they kind of just like set it up and, and just went with it because he hates journalists, so it's great. He's still all together, you know? He's still able to recall all of these uh, these nuances, you know, from, uh, from important periods of his life and, you know, his relationships with people, you know, talking to Jean Cocteau in Paris and also being a Nazi at the same time. And then 102 years old, it doesn't even, it, we have a lot to learn from him. So you can listen to him talk about saving his brother on the battlefield of World War I. I mean, can any of us actually imagine what it would be like to be put in that position? You know, and then also being saved by his friend who was shot in the head and killed shortly thereafter. Goebbels at one time offered him a seat in the Nazi parliament and he declined with the response that uh, he would rather write one good poem than represent 60,000 idiots. He also inspired the assassination attempt on Hitler. Did not participate in it, but wrote something that did inspire it, which is very interesting. That was, around, that was much later. That was around 1940. 40. Uh, I think 44, 43, 44. So, anyways, he was a total contradiction. He pissed everybody off. He pissed off the right. He pissed off the left. He was a conservative, very much a critical thinker and impossible to summarize. A brilliant artist, basically. He also knew Henri Ferdinand Céline and said he, you know, <laughs> said he was a total prick, which, you know, you, you could have gathered that. He's one of the most fascinating authors I've ever read. Junger, not Céline. This is an essay that outlines humanity's relationship to pain, self-sacrifice, and death, exploring ideology prominently found in fascism, and also exploring the idea of the dissolution of the individual in the age of mechanized warfare. It's a brilliant book. I can't recommend it enough. David C. Durst, our translator, says this, On Pain announces a new metaphysics of pain. It no longer seeks the measure of man and the liberal values of security, liberty, and comfort but in the capacity to withstand pain and sacrifice oneself for a higher cause. Now, it's my opinion that the voluntary infliction of excessive pain upon others for your own benefit or amusement is the finest example of cowardice and cruelty. To willfully inflict pain upon yourself with the intention of growing stronger, of withstanding it, of challenging yourself, of testing your limits, that's something else entirely. I find that to be something incredibly admirable, whether it's through physical or intellectual pain, through strife, any kind of struggle, you know. Those ideas in this book, I believe, are extremely valuable to everybody. Anybody who has to live, anybody who knows that pain is inevitable, that we will all have to deal with it and reconcile, 
you know, our relationship with it in some fashion. Junger saw the era of the bourgeoisie coming to an end. Its values, habits, and very way of life had become incommensurate with the times. This was especially apparent in the confrontation with pain. According to Junger, the bourgeois individual typically dwells in a zone of sensitivity, where security, ease, and comfort, and ultimately the body itself, become the, quintessent become the essential core of life. Here one seeks to avoid pain at all costs. The secret of modern sensitivity is that it corresponds to a world in which the body is itself the highest value. This observation explains why modern sensitivity relates to pain as a power to be avoided at all cost. Because here, pain confronts the body not as an outpost, but as the main force and essential core of life. So, if you're a fan of Yukio Mishima or Friedrich Nietzsche, or you're just going through some shit in life and you need to get stronger to figure it out, this is for you. Again, from the introduction, Junger's worldview, style of thought, and perception were trained in youth on the battlefield, quite literally. For a soldier-turned-writer, the clash of forces has method. It brings clarity to an otherwise confused and chaotic world. Junger seeks not solutions, but conflicts. Not a neutralization or reconciliation of antagonisms, but Nietzschean intensification of the struggle. So how does this relate to you and I in our safe little walled up technological bubbles? Nothing is more certain and unavoidable than pain. It resembles life's inescapable shadow or a grist mill grinding the grain ever finer and with ever more incisive rotations. A successful blogger, entrepreneur, and now, as it turns out, uh, a uh, book reviewer uh, whom I follow very closely here on YouTube named John Sonmez recently talked about learning to love pain in a video of his talking about learning to love the grind to love pain to make pain your home this is a guy who recently fasted for 24 hours and ran a marathon marathon what is it 26 miles or something like that no food why? Just to say he could. You ever gone on a 36 hour fast? You ought to try it. Hunger teaches you a lot of things. You want to be productive, you want to get in shape, you want to go learn how to make money, especially if you're a young guy and you got all these options and you have no idea what to do, then go check him out. He's your man. Real nice guy. John Sonmez, simple programmer. Better than food. Embracing the concept pain is your home will cause you to grow in no short measure. If you consistently strive to be comfortable, to avoid pain, to go out of your way to diffuse conflict in your life and in your mind, if you don't choose to actively participate in the struggle, in any struggle, you will become weak. You will find your physical and intellectual muscles atrophying, catabolizing, and feasting on themselves, devouring themselves. Yes. If you stop reading, if you stop using your mind to lift heavy loads, so to speak, you will become stupid. You will become dumb. Use it or lose it. If you're complaining about not getting laid, yet you are actively avoiding the challenge of actually going out and talking to another human being, you do not deserve to get laid. You do not deserve to get laid if you are not trying to make yourself more attractive in every single shape and form. This applies to everything. Sometimes we get lucky and things just fall into place with little or no effort and, you know, you win the lottery. Congratulations. Pat yourself on the back. Sometimes this is a great thing for people. Beautiful thing about chance. Other times, it's the worst thing that could happen to them. They grow weak. They grow lazy. They stop trying and they just... rot. This being said, not everything that we do that is painful will make us stronger, of course, right? You have to have the persistence and conditioning and wisdom to understand which types of pain will make you stronger, which ones will pay off, basically. Because weightlifting is a form of painful self-destruction. Drinking alcohol is another. My generation, and I am absolutely included in this, have been painfully fucking lazy. No pun intended. We think we deserve the world, we think we deserve a happy life, a life worth living, after doing basically fuck all to get it. Why look in the dictionary when you can Google it? Why get laid when you can watch porn? Why go to the theater when you can watch the film on your iPhone while taking a shit? Why read a book when you can listen to it? Why read a book when you can have somebody else 
read it to you. All right, I'm guilty of this. I listen to some audiobooks, but it's it's not it's not for fiction. It's just for like, you know. See, guilty. Blaming other people for your own shortcomings has never been more popular in history ever. Blame everything. Blame your parents, blame the universe, blame God, blame your dog, whatever. Because you couldn't possibly be responsible for your own shortcomings and failures, could you, comrade Snowflake? And that is where you lose. That is where we lose. That is where I've been. And that is where we make the biggest mistakes. Where I've made my biggest mistakes. Because you give up control. You can find any number of reasons to feel sorry for yourself. Whether or not you think you can do something you're right. Pain is not popular these days. It's unfashionable to be in pain. To prove you can withstand it. To understand your limits. To understand the material you're composed of physically and mentally. It's not fashionable to grow as strong as possible from sheer day in day out grinding. From the mental stress of menial tasks or the laborious process of lifting heavy objects to break down your tissue to strategically build it back. It's not fashionable to read extremely difficult books and apply what you learned from them to living. It's very fashionable to have done all of these things, or as many of us will kid ourselves to pretend we have done them, to trick ourselves into thinking we've accomplished important tasks, pretending we're desirable or have things to offer, or when faced with the truth, to adopt the motto that uh, the world doesn't understand us and people just don't get it. If you're doing something and you're not giving it everything and you're half-assing it and you're not getting anywhere, well, no shit, Sherlock. Take responsibility. Love your pain. Cherish it and welcome it. Use it. Learn from it. You don't have time for anything else. None of us do. I know I sound like a hard ass. I don't succeed in taking my own advice 24 hours out of the day. I'm human, just like you. Like Jack Donovan wrote recently, this is for me too. And Junger, I imagine, would probably say the same. I reviewed Storm of Steel last year, which was Junger's diary and account of trench warfare in World War I. Brilliant novel. Junger is controversial to some because he looks like a hard ass, but he's not inhuman. Far from it. On this flip side, Junger discusses the age of total mobilization, of the objectivity of this new kind of warfare that he experienced in World War I and then saw evolve into World War II, especially. You know, this dissolution of the individual, the opposite of Enlightenment values surfacing, the reduction of the human into an ideological piece of utilitarian war technology, a death factory, the systematic, ideologically fueled slaughterhouse. To link another idea to the human projectile, it is obvious that with such a stance, man is superior to every imaginable multitude of individuals. His superiority, of course, is still given even when not armed with explosives. For we are not dealing here with superiority over human beings, but over the space in which the law of pain rules. The superiority is the highest. It bears within itself all other forms of superiority. We saw that man is able to resist the assault of pain to the degree that he is capable of self-detachment. This self-detachment, this functionalization and objectification of life increases uninterruptedly. The age of security has been superseded with surprising speed by another, in which the values of technology prevail. The logic and mathematics now governing life are extraordinary and awe-inspiring. One has the feeling the game is too sophisticated and logical for the human mind to have devised. Jürgen makes references to the anarchist in Joseph Conrad's novel, The Secret Agent, who is always carrying around the bomb ready to detonate it. However, you could just as easily make the connection to the devotees of ISIS. This does have a very dark side, and as conservative as Jünger was, he was not with the Nazis. He was, in fact, threatened by the Nazis in their rise to power, and his apartment was raided in 1933. His tone changed, of course, after everything came out, and he made this movement towards this kind of Christian humanism. I haven't read On the Marble Cliffs, which came out a few years after this, but I'm told it's one giant critique of the Nazis. So do not misunderstand me and do not misunderstand Ernst Jünger. This is not uh, a, a declaration that life should be spent in constant pain or strife or agony. Think of it in the yin-yang terms, right? Order, chaos. Out of chaos comes order, out of order comes chaos. Have one foot in both, ideally. Expect and embrace the pain that finds you. Listen to the signals it sends. Stop running. Stop 
pretending. You'll only hurt yourself, and nobody will save you. I can't reduce all the ideas and arguments in On Pain to a single takeaway message. Uh, to do so, I think, would be a disservice to the book. It's complex. It's exciting, and it's disturbing, and I can't recommend it highly enough. It's pretty short, too. You can finish it in a day. While I can't reduce it to one single message, however, the concept of self-sacrifice, the discipline, and the learning to love pain, to love the inevitable struggle and the conflict all of us will face, to some degree, if you can learn to do that, to truly embrace the worst things that life has to throw at you, to reject the temptation to think of yourself as a victim, then you win. You've accepted your human vulnerability and you've transcended the existential malaise we all find ourselves wrapped up in. In other words, you are strong. I am not there yet, but I'm moving towards it. I won't be able to embody all of these ideas all of the time, but if I can at least part of the time, a significant part of the time, then I've succeeded. Going back to John Sonmez, like he says, don't fight your nature, change it. In doing so, we can be strong without being cold. Pain is better than food. How is that for an intermittent fasting slogan? Always remember that life is too short to read bullshit. That's for damn sure. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you got something valuable out of this. How you doing? Hey, good to see ya. It's been a little while. Gotta manage the time, man. It just slips away if you don't pay attention. I'm just, uh, just whittling down in minimalist fashion, just like cutting everything unnecessary out. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing really well. I hope you have a great Christmas and uh, that, you're, uh, that your families are safe and sound and that you are doing very well. I know everything gets really tough around the holidays, so I thought this would be appropriate. <laughs> Embrace your pain, you know? The worst stuff kind of like boils to the surface with families and or your relationships or your issues with money or, you know, anything. You know, all this stuff just sort of uh, creeps out in this period so you know I hope it's not too bad and I hope that you can embrace the pain you can grow stronger because of it you know so I hope you're all doing well subscribe if you haven't already there's a lot of great stuff on the way uh, yeah support on patreon to check out the private vlog where you get all this great stuff that I'm producing all about you know not just books but film and art and music and you know Arvo Part who's an incredible composer and yeah uh, did an essay a little while ago on Christopher Doyle and meeting meeting him in Hong Kong. It's great, very entertaining. You should check out his films that he shot if you've never if you've never had the pleasure. Uh, his work with Wong Kar Wai is among like the greatest stuff ever put on celluloid. So highly recommended. Um, yeah, always remember life is way too short to read bullshit. That's for damn sure. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Take care. Ciao.